Hello, hello, reef junkies, reef keepers, reef entrepreneurs, reef fiends, reef addicts, and reef nuts. My name is Michael. I'm here to talk about Michael's Lagoon. Uh, this is episode something, and uh, today I'm going to talk about filtration. First, before I get going, I want to say a huge thank you to anyone that subscribed to my channel so far. I think I have over 200 subscriptions now uh, since I started this channel talking about my reef tank. My goal in starting this channel was to provide feedback and just share my experience as a, as a reef keeper and a reef tank enthusiast just to hopefully help somebody uh, similar to myself who's just starting out and um, you know can maybe relate to my experiences. That's been my goal and um, feedback has been fantastic. Everyone's been really positive and people love my tank, which is great to hear. So thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Now, before I get going, I do want to mention something exciting. Um, as I've grown in subscribers, I decided that a giveaway would be pretty cool. Um, so what I'm going to be giving away is an Aqua Illuminations Orbit 2 Wave Maker. Um, I purchased this for my tank and it is just, it provides too much flow for my 25 gallon lagoon. So I put it in my tank, I turned it on, it dang near blew everything over. So I ripped it out and I ended up going with the Nero 3. Uh, which works perfect for my size tank. So this baby has only been unboxed and put in a tank for about 20 seconds, ripped back out and thrown right back in the box, practically brand new. Um, I want to give it away to one of my subscribers. So, um, you know, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to come up with a really fun way uh, to give this out to one of you. So if you are subscribed, you will be included in that list. Uh, be sure to click. So let's get into it. Let's talk about filtration. Now, in my mind, uh, the first thing that comes to uh, mind when I'm discussing filtration is um, the water and where you get your water. I don't use tap water in my tank. Um, I use the RODI method, which I'm sure most of you have read about or heard about, which is the reverse osmosis deionized, deionizing process of eliminating um, impurities from tap water or just ordinary water for that matter. Um, now, this RODI method removes between 90 and 99% of impurities um, that are found in your average water. Um, some of those impurities can be uh, rust, chlorine, copper, uh, sodium, mercury, and the list goes on and on. Uh, the deionization process also separates molecules and ions to give you the highest purity of water or as the water boy would say. And that's what I call high quality a tool. So what I do is I have a RODI bundle that I purchased from an Amazon retailer. It works great. Um, I hook it up to my sink about once a month. I do have a 20 gallon Rubbermaid bin that I keep full with already filtered water out in my garage. I keep that water circulated and I keep it heated. So if I need to do an emergency water change, I'm ready to go. I don't mix salt water in my, in my uh, uh, filtered water. I do that before I do a water change, uh, right before I do a water change actually. I'll dump my salt in, get it mixing for about 15, 20 minutes. Once I check it with my refractometer and the salinity's in check, that's when I'll go about doing my water change. And in addition to that, I keep about 15 gallons of uh, jugs worth of ROD water RODI water separate from that on the side. Um, I use that for my, my water reservoir underneath for my auto top off. And uh, yeah, so having that just on standby is really beneficial. Um, and having it in a, you know, a pre-stored like Rubbermaid tub just really helps with volume knowing and, and security and peace of mind knowing that you have that much ROD water ready to go. Um, so that's my, that's my water. So I think starting with, you know, the highest pure purity of water is a great start rather than using your tap water. Because tap water, just I've, heard, I've heard, read horror stories of people using it and having crazy algae blooms and outbreaks that end up you know, just running over their tank. And once that stuff happens, you can't get it out or you have a hell of a time getting it out. So I just suggest those of you starting out, just start out with RODI water, make the investment, get the filtration package and do it right. I, it's worked for me and I'm confident that it will work for you too. So moving on to physical filtration in the back of my tank, this is an innovative marine all-in-one 25 gallon lagoon. I have no filtration underneath other than my, my dosing uh, containers and pumps and my auto top off uh, reservoir. 
All my filtration is housed back here along the back side. I'm going to start. I'm going to start on this side, which is my media basket. I purchased the media basket through Innovative Marine, um, and I also purchased the Innovative Marine Purity Pack that goes with that media basket. Um, included in that Purity Pack is um, some some filter floss, uh, granular ferric pouch, and a carbon pouch. I purchased a filter pad through Amazon that works great. Comes in a roll, and I've had it for six months now. I think it's it's getting down to the bare bones so i'll have to purchase a new one here soon but it's cheap and it works great i replace that filter pad about every two days um, now the granular ferric pouch uh, helps reduce phosphates in your tank um, if you have a high nutrient system um, and the carbon pouch um, it removes colorations and debris from your from your water column and it dissolves organics which is going to really help you with your water clarity um, now that's chamber number one now once my water goes through chamber number one it gets uh, sucked down through my ladder and it gets spit out the bottom, which goes into my refugium. Now, my refugium I built using an innovative marine media basket. I removed one of the shelves in there to give me a, a larger compartment. And what I did is I, uh, I stuck some Cato algae in there and some live rock and some live sand. And um, it's, it's been working great. I haven't really touched it since I set it up, which is about four months ago. Um, now, the Cato algae helps reduce your phosphates and your nitrates, and um, it also provides a breeding ground for a food source for your fish, like copods and tigger pods in the back of your tank. If you just dump them in your tank, they're going to get eaten up rather quickly. They won't survive. If you put them back in your refugium, they have a place to breed, a place where they're safe, and they're going to eventually find your way into your display tank, feeding your, your fish and your livestock. Um, now, the live rock and sand is, uh, it acts as like a breeding ground for biological filtration. And what I mean by that is my display tank, as you can see, it's, it's, it's incredibly clear. There's not a lot of algae. Um, my refugium, on the other hand, I just let go wild. You know, it's, it's covered in algae, coralline algae. God knows what's back there. I don't touch it. I leave it be. And I just trust whatever is growing back there is for the better. And it helps filter my water on its way through back into the return pump. Um, now that is going to be chamber number one. Chamber number two. In the middle is my return pump. On the other side, I have two other changers, chambers. What you're going to see on the outside is my UV sterilizer or, ultra, or ultraviolet sterilizer by Innovative Marine as well. And um, I'm just going to add, that's another great thing about purchasing a tank from a, a phenomenal manufacturer like Innovative Marine is all these products are designed to fit in that aquarium. It just makes it so much easier for you to customize and build your tank and your filtration. So my UV sterilizer, um, it helps keep water uh, clear by preventing algae blooms for one. In addition, um, it lowers common reef parasites from, from thriving in my tank. And it's debatable on whether or not it does prevent parasites or if it kills parasites. But one common uh, you know, comment that I find in all the reef forums is that it alters the DNA of your parasites and prevents them from um, multiplying or breeding. I, haven't seen anything to the contrary, so I have to believe that that is true. I haven't had any parasites in my tank. It does a great job. Now, uh, water does need to flow through the UV sterilizer in order for it to be effective. You can't just have it fully submerged. It does need to be suspended. That water needs to go down and get sucked down through the UV sterilizer to work. Now, once that water goes through my UV sterilizer, it goes into my next chamber, which is my protein skimmer by Innovative Marine as well. Um, now, what the protein skimmer does is it uh, removes protein and organic waste from your water column, and it, it, it volcanoes out this really nasty, ugly-looking, stinky, stinky stuff uh, that I clean out about once every three to four days, I would say, depending on how much you're actually skimming. Um, a, a good protein skimmer, it helps promote a healthy gas exchange by introducing more oxygen into your tank maintaining your pH and um, it makes your fish happy because your fish and your livestock consume the oxygen and just as your uh, surface agitation does it, it promotes a healthy gas exchange and, and keeps your tank uh, ha happy and healthy. Now um, another thing I did forget to mention with my refugium is that it is a lit refugium. I purchased this great light um, that's a, that has a purple LED light that turns on every night at 9 p.m. when my display tank light turns off and it runs all night long until 8 a.m. when my display tank light turns on. And the purpose of that is to keep my pH balanced throughout the night so my tank doesn't see a huge drop off when my lights go off. 
Um, I have a pH monitor. I've come in here a couple times when I've stayed up late uh, to check it, and it does really, it does in fact do a great job at keeping your pH balanced. So if you have a refugium, I highly suggest you light it. It also helps promote the Cato algae growth or whatever organics you have in there um, to remove or to remove phosphates and nitrates from a potentially loaded aquarium. Now, I'm sure a lot of you think this is overkill. Um, sure, some of you may disagree with some of my methods and what it is that I use in my filtration, and that's totally fine. You know, I could very well be doing something wrong, but uh, what I can say with 100% certainty is that it's working for me. Um, I know the key to successful reefing is consistency. Even if you're a little off from perfect, that's okay as long as you're consistent. And what I'm seeing is consistency in my tank and everything is thriving, adjusting, and adapting. So it's working very well for me. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe because pretty soon I'm gonna be giving away this awesome Aqua Illuminations Orbit 2. And if you're on my subscription list when I do that, you will be included. If you are not, tough luck, Chuck. All right, that's it for Michael's Lagoon. I'm out of here. Peace.